this case, I finally have some Painted Infinity armies. Uh, that's been a target of mine for ages now. And the pressures of keeping to commission schedules has been the main thing keeping me off of that. Mixed in with a little bit of, you know, trying to bring you folks YouTube content. But, all of that said, no complaints from me, because I do finally have two Infinity Armies ready to go. Now, at the time of recording this video, I'll be just a couple of days out from the first ever annual ShyCon, and there's going to be more content relating to that on the channel, but basically it's just an annual meetup that we want to start doing for all my patrons, where we get together at Lazy Dragon Gaming, our sponsor, and we play games all day. It's going to be a really fun time, we're all very excited for it. But that has pushed me. It's given me a reason to just knuckle down and get some armies painted. Now that's not always the easiest thing to do. And I know that often we can struggle with finding the time, finding the motivation. But what can actually happen when you get a little spike of motivation? Well, you might remember that I've been working on O12 and Ariadna, if you've been following my Infinity content on the channel. And I'd got a reasonable way through. I probably had, talking in code one terms here, around about 15 points of each army. But going away for a full day of gaming that's going to include a lot of infinity, or at least a lot of code one, I wanted to be able to field two full 25 to 30 point armies. And I had the miniatures. They've been sitting just behind me here in blister packs for a long time now. So... I decided to start doing some work on getting some stuff painted. And this video is all about how that went, what I got done, and how I feel about it. So looking at the O12 first, because that was a lesser contribution, uh, I already had, let's see here, I've got uh, a Kappa. A Kappa, come out, come on, you can do it. A Kappa. I will get some... Uh, Nice camera shots of these. It's already had three cappers done. Uh, they were some of the earlier paints that I did for O12, and they were speed paints. Uh, I think I was completing these in about two hours a piece, I want to say. I think I did like two together in a four hour session, and then one on its own in a two hour session. So these are definitely in the region of what I would call speed painted. And I actually really like them. Um, they are painted quickly, and it definitely notices when you when you like really scrutinise them. There's you know a very simple skin tone that I've done on these. Um, whereas I've tried maybe a little bit more, especially on the longer haired models, to make the hair a bit more standing out and the skin a little bit more subtle. Um, but they're painted fine. It's quick, simple painting, and you know I like that. I I enjoy quick, simple painting, especially on a really good sculpt because you can. Next up, we have Hippolyta. Uh, Hippolyta, I spent definitely a bit more time on. Now, sadly, at some point, I've had her on my desk while I've been um, rattle can varnishing. And I don't really rattle can varnish indoors. But every now and again, if I literally just need to give something a squirt or two, then I'll just pop a couple of masks on and, you know, just give it a squirt or two. If I'm ever doing anything that remotely constitutes a session, it's outside. Because, you know, safety first. But it seems like I've been really unlucky here in that the time that I've um, had her very briefly in the vicinity of whatever rattle can I was given a couple of squirts to, some particles have collected on her white cape. So she's actually one of the ones that I put a bit of time and effort into. She's got about six or seven hours into her, which is a reasonable amount of time to spend for a fairly quick character model, in my opinion. And, I, you know, I, I think that's uh, that's an okay amount of time to put in. Yeah, the little accident with the rattle can has kind of brought her back down a little bit in, in terms of how nice she looks. The speckling on her cape is uh, it's pretty unfortunate and, you know, not ideal. But these things do happen, you know, she's not... She doesn't look in such a way that I'd be, like, embarrassed to put her on the table, so... She'll still be used. She'll still uh, she'll still go on the table. You might remember this next one. Uh, so this is a remote that was, and for some reason my head is currently blanking on what the O12 remotes are called. Um, I think they've all got their own names, haven't they? You, yeah, Copperbots, that's it. You've got Pila, Kitta. Yeah, I, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, but this is a missile Copperbot. Uh, I've only got one of these painted up at the minute. The other one I want to put an HMG on to use as a TR bot. 
Um, this one will probably end up almost never actually being a missile bot, uh, which is kind of why I put the missile on it, because I'll sort of notice like, oh, that's a missile bot. That's definitely not a missile bot, right? It's probably going to end up actually on the table mostly being a cheerleader bot. But uh, this one you might remember because this, it got a video of its own all about edge highlighting. And I felt like this was a perfect sculpt to talk about edge highlighting because it had a good mix of subtle edges that you have to freehand yourself, sharp edges that you can side brush. Uh, so this one actually got over a day's work because not only did it get about eight hours of painting, but it also got a video. And I do think it shows things like the non-metallic metals. Uh, I've just spent more time on the blends. Obviously, all of that edge highlighting is very sharp and crispy, stuff like that. It does notice, it does show through. Um, and I think, you know, it's interesting to see that, especially compared to something like one of these cappers, where, you know, maybe the effort discrepancy shows up a little bit more there. I don't know. The other one that got a lot of time was this uh, Gamma with Feuerbach. Uh, and it got a lot of time because... The majority of the time that I take this in Code 1, I take it as a lieutenant. So, you know, if, if you're going to take it as a lieutenant, it, it wants to look posh, right? It wants to look like the guy in charge. So I gave it this nice, uh, really controlled airbrush fade um, to kind of show some annealing on the barrel of the foyer back. Took plenty of time over, you know, the blends on the, the yellows and the blues. Put little free hands all over him. Even free handed the 012 decal onto his shoulder. Uh, you know, just all in all quite a bit of effort and it was worth it. I actually, I really enjoyed painting this one, spending the time. The finishing touches to this, I actually did uh, during a live painting hangout with the Loss of Lieutenant guys in their Discord, which was really, really good fun. So just chatting to them, just chatting about, you know, real life shit, not anything to do with miniatures and, and having a paint away and that was good fun. The next model to look at, this is an, again, an interesting one. This was the test scheme for them all. This is a gangbuster and uh, this is the one that I first painted when I first... So I started with Operation Wildfire, but Operation Wildfire wasn't actually the current box. I wanted it for the 012. Uh, I ended up giving away or selling all of the Shasvasti. I wasn't interested in keeping those, but I wanted it for the 012. And at the time, I believe there wasn't an 012 action pack. Maybe? Could be making that up. But the Gangbuster was the first model that I decided this is the one that I want to start out with painting and this is how I established all of the techniques that I used for my O12. So this is where I came up with the idea that I wanted to do a purple glaze to create some shadow on the flat blue panels so that they weren't just, you know, flatly coloured with an edge highlight. Uh, this is where I decided I wanted to do the kind of yellow that is kind of halfway between yellow and non-metallic gold you know it sort of looks a little bit reflective but it's mostly yellow uh, the idea being that i wanted it to look like reflective yellow material uh, so all of those kind of ideas uh, they found their genesis on this model uh, another thing that i'll quite commonly do is just a slight gray to black fade on the guns and then apply the edge highlighting. And again, that was established on this model. So so again, this one got about probably seven, six or seven hours. I, I definitely took my time with it. And that was because I was, you know, experimenting and establishing times and stuff. So at the moment, we've got like three that were speed painted and four that were painted with more concerted effort. But then we come to the two that I managed to get done during the last week of, uh, of just pushing through my Infinity models, getting ready for Shycon. Uh, and that is the, the Delta Hacker and the Epsilon Sniper. And yeah, some stuff changed on these. So I was still very much speed painting. Uh, both of these were painted in the same day. They probably total about three hours each of work. Uh, so a little bit more than the Kappas, but definitely less than any of the individually painted models. Um, I changed the yellow that I was using for one that was brighter. And that's now something I'm going to have to go back and do on all the other models. So that's fun. I've made some work for myself there. Uh, but this is Pale Saffron from Reaper Master Series now. The yellow's on this. And I really prefer how it looks. Um, other than that, there's no major changes to the colour scheme. Everything else is basically the same. The level of effort is about what, you know, what it should be for intermediate speed painting. Like, I'm painting fast, but as fast as I can without it you know, losing too much quality. Um, and I do think these look noticeably better in some areas than the cappers. Uh, but I think the cappers maybe... 
think the cappers maybe are a little grittier looking, which perhaps can in some ways fit better in the Infinity Universe. Uh, these two, the, the Delta and the Epsilon, are very bright, and that might not be everyone's idea of Cyberpunk, but I really like them anyway. So we've got five models painted to a uh, relatively quick standard, and then uh, we've got four models so far painted to a bit of a longer standard. Now, if I just reach over here, and the reason they're over here out of camera and not in this case is because these are now models that I finished at the very end of last week and they just had their varnishing done yesterday. So I'm filming this on a Monday, by the way. That's why I keep sort of referring to dates that way. Um, and so this is the Lambda support unit Doctor and her two little Yudbots. Now, there's a reason I prioritised this as the last model. I wanted 10 models for 012. Uh, obviously, I've ended up painting 12 because I... I've painted these two Yudbots. Um, but the reason I chose these is because I quite often take the Lambda Medic anyway. I like the Lambda Medic, and I usually take her with one Yudbot. But I thought if I paint the other Yudbot, then at least if I want to take the Delta Medic, then I can take a Yudbot with the Delta Medic. The Delta Medic does come with one. So it's actually included in the profile as well. So like you may as well take it, right? Uh, so I figured that it would give me the option, it would add a bit more flexibility to the list. And compared to what you're going to see with Ariadna, you'll realise how much more um, how much more stuff I have available for Ariadna. I bought a lot deeper into that faction. Um, but this is an okay set of models. You know, this is alright. And the only thing it really needs is maybe a couple of other options so that it can take a variety of lists. Um, so as we get toward the end of the video, we'll start to talk about that. But for now, this is what I've got painted. This is what I managed to get ready. And of this, obviously, it is the Lambda, the two Yudbots, the Delta and the Epsilon are the things that I painted last week. Everything else had been painted prior. So that little collection of five models is everything that I got painted last week. And I'm fairly happy with that, to be honest, when you consider that it's at the same time as some other stuff. So let's go and have a look at Ariadna. Okay, so over in the land of Ariadna, things are a little bit different because, as I said, uh, I have more options. I have far more options for Ariadna. So let's do a similar thing. Uh, Rockots, first of all. Uh, I speed painted these. And again, there's actually a video on how I speed painted these up on the channel. So if I'm, if I'm being good at YouTube, I'll remember. And uh, as I mentioned in these various previous videos, I'll be linking them. So that'll be a good test for for how good I am at YouTube. So three Rockots here, and uh, these are about 90 minutes each to get done. Uh, my Ariadna scheme is a lot easier to paint than my O12 scheme, just because it has a lot more like full areas painted in single colors, as opposed to uh, more detailed, overlaid, small areas on top of other things. And that's kind of the nature of Ariadna. They are simpler miniatures, um, which is one of the reasons I love them so much. I'm a big fan of a simpler miniature. I think it's nice to have that creative freedom to be able to take something far if you wish to by adding your own painted detail, but not having the sculpted detail force you to a minimum level of commitment. Um, and there is a bit of that with O12. O12 are such detailed miniatures that there is a bit of forced minimum level of commitment, which is why... The speed painted O12 are like two, three, and four hours, whereas the speed painted Ariadna are all like 90 minutes. But nonetheless, we've got three Rockots. Uh, they were from, like I say, the fairly early days of when I started collecting the faction, and they didn't take very long to get painted. Again, this is from the existing lot of, uh, of Ariadna stuff. It's a, an AP HMG Tank Hunter. Again, this was one of those, this is one of those miniatures that... Um, I really wanted the auto cannon guy, so I thought I was being clever and bought the two pack. And it turns out that the old sculpt auto cannon guy in the two pack is actually really not the best. It's one of the very small number of Corvus Belly miniatures that I'm not super keen on. Very fiddly to put together, not a great build. They have since updated things, and now you can buy a, an auto cannon uh, tank hunter on its own in a single blister which is a modified sculpt. It's the same base sculpt, but it's been modified to make it less of a pain in the arse and to make it look a little bit nicer. And if you want the auto cannon one, I would say don't buy the two pack. Um, 
by that single auto cannon guy. But if you want this guy, he is really cool. And I, so I decided to kind of cut my losses, you know, uh, the auto cannon guy, I'll buy the new one. I'm not going to fuck with this one. Um, but I'll paint the APHMG guy because he's cool. So this again was fairly early on. Um, and you can tell that it's fairly early on because I'm still experimenting and finding exactly the shade of green that I want for the armor and stuff like that. Um, but again, he's a speed paint. He is, um, I think, about two hours. He's not quite 90 minutes. I think he's about two hours. So nice and quick and simple and easy. So I actually don't use this guy as a Mormir. I use him as a vet Kazakh with APHMG. But I still painted him up as a Mormeo because at some point I'm going to play at N4. Um, in, in Code 1, he the, there, are, there are no Mormeos. Um, but the Vet Kazakh obviously looks very similar to this, the, the APHMG one. A lot of people often comment on how similar those two models look. Um, so I painted him as a Mormeo so that when I'm playing N4, and I have sort of started dipping my toes into N4 already, uh, I have a Mormeo. But then I do also have a Vet Kazakh behind me still in Blister, ready to paint up, so that I've got the two different options. But for now, we use this guy. Vet Kazakhs are really good in Code 1. They're an excellent heavy infantry option. Um, so this guy sort of fills that role for me. Uh, and again, he's got a lot more time in him. There's Tartan that's been painted properly. Um, this was actually the inspiration for the William Wallace Tartan skit that I did a while ago. Um, he's got the Scottish flag. There's Rust. Um, the armor's, you know, a lot more sort of scratched and worked up, and there's a lot more time in this one. Probably about six hours, I would say, if uh, if memory is serving me correctly. And for six hours, I think it's a nice-looking miniature. I think it's worth that kind of investment of time. Speaking of, uh, here's the William Wallace from the Tartan video, and again, uh, probably about sort of a four-hour, this one, a little bit quicker. Um... And that's mostly just because I rushed the non-metallics. All of the sort of bionic arm non-metallics that would normally be the bottleneck on this, they'd normally be the part that would make you sort of slow down and take longer. I just kind of rushed them a little bit, did a bit of a quick method, just with like um, highlighting up basically just through like into white and then just blue glazing over everything and then retouching the white. It's just a lot quicker than sort of blue toning as you go up through the transitions. And, and so that led to something a bit quicker. The sword is just wet blended. People are often people often comment on the sword because it's my channel colours. It's the you know the the pink and sort of tealy turquoisey kind of tones um, that I really like to use for anything channel related. Uh, and and so people often comment on that. That's actually just a really quick wet blend and just a little bit of sort of dotting and dashing to create some sparkle on it. It's very very simple painting. Um, so this this miniature is actually deceptively simple. But he does have, again, the tartan on him, so, you know, he is probably about four hours because the tartan and uh, the bionic areas do sort of force a bit of slow down there if you want to include them. This is the only model so far in my Ariadna that's in a different colour scheme. Uh, this is in a sort of an urban camo, and that was more of an experiment than anything else. I, I like the SAS model a lot. I play it quite often. Um... So it maybe is a little jarring to have one model painted in a different camo, but I was considering painting some of my Ariadna in urban and some of them in forest camo, and so, you know, having kind of two separate detachments that mix together for different operations. I ended up not doing that, so she is the only model that's painted in this urban camo, but I think she's cool. I really like her, and uh, and I'm glad I took the time to do that. Um, again, she is a bit of a longer paint. She took probably five to six hours. So she's in that similar region to uh, to the Mormaya and sort of a little bit longer than was spent on the uh, Tank Hunter and, and William Wallace and a lot longer than was spent on the Rockots. Uh, so the final OG from my Ariadna, this is the, the last model from the sort of initial burst of painting is uh, the Blackjack. Uh, this is the uh, T2 Blackjack and... In Code 1, this is actually a bit of a cruddy model. Um, the the rifle is just an AP sniper rifle in, in Code 1, which, I mean, look at it. It's it's not an AP sniper rifle. We have a scout with an AP sniper rifle, um, which, again, we're going to come to shortly. That will be mentioned in this video. And um, this is not it. This is a much bigger weapon. Uh, so, yeah, this Blackjack I'm actually a little bit disappointed in. Um didn't do my best job of it. And that's mostly just a contrast thing. Um, 
I pushed the airbrush side of the pre-prep a little bit too far, which meant that I was left with the option of either having really bright edge highlights, which I didn't want, or having lower contrast. So the panel blending, because I pushed it too far, I couldn't get as much contrast out of the edge highlight, and that means the overall contrast of the armor is a little bit lower than I'd like it to be. It's a nice, big, imposing, good-looking miniature, so I think it does get away with it, but it's probably the one paint in my... Yeah, it's probably the one model in my Infinity Collection that I'm a little bit... I could have done a better job of that, and I probably should have done a better job of that. But, you know... Still, it's it's a you know it's a six hour paint again. It's it's in that similar region to uh, to SAS and Mormaya. It's pretty reasonable. It's not like it has an acre of time in it and therefore should be exquisite. I try to do high quality speed painting as my sort of main thing, and applying that to miniatures as complex and detailed as Infinity miniatures is a really fun challenge. So it's good to see those defeats. Um, but that is everything that I had already painted up. So uh, what are we at there? That's eight models. So again, you know, it's around that sort of 15 point-ish, 15 to 18 point-ish mark, but it's not a complete army. So what did I add to it? So the first thing I did was grab this Cosmo sold out. And again, I didn't give it a ton of time, but it was painted individually on its own. Uh, probably... It's probably about another 90 minute, although maybe a couple of things did tip over the 90 minutes slightly, just because of things like, you know, the blended visor, I may have sort of gone back and revisited it afterwards, but but this is one of the things that I did last week, uh, Cosmo sold out, probably the best heavy infantry Ariadna have in Code 1, uh, very points efficient, so pretty decent, especially considering it has armor 6, it's quite hard to put down as well. Really good model, so I knew I needed to have one of those. Then I did these three all at the same time. Uh, so here we have a Zenit 7, uh, Uxia McNeil with boarding shotgun and uh, light shotgun 112 Doctor. These three models, I there's a, they're a bit of a mixed bag here. Um, Uxia is often like my second SAS when I want the multi-spectral visor. So Uxia I do actually play quite a bit. And that's a shame because she's probably the one I rushed the most out of these. She's probably the one that I will go back and revisit and do a lot of extra work on because I actually really like the miniature. Um, but Uxia I play a lot. 112 I also play quite a bit. You can obviously take like a Rock Up Paramedic or a Kazakh Doctor. There are plenty of options for medics in Ariadna. But I really like the 112 model, and so I wanted to take the opportunity to get one painted up for the army because I like playing it purely on merits of the model anyway. So those two are kind of, they, they go in a lot of my lists anyway, and that gets me up to 10 models. That would get me to about 20 points. That would, you know, but it's not quite what you want. Again, with Ariadna, maybe more so than a lot of other armies, because of their technological disadvantages, you really want a lot of options with Ariadna. Uh, I painted a Zenit 7 here, and this one was a bit of a regret. Again, we're going to come to it, but spoiler, I normally play a Scout with AP Sniper Rifle, and... I don't, because I don't really play a Zenit 7, I was sort of, I had it primed up and I started base coated it and I was like, why am I painting this Zenit 7? I always play a Scout. And then I'm like, do I just not have a Scout? So I went and checked my blister packs behind me uh, of, of, you know, stuff that I need to get started on. And lo and behold, I absolutely do own an AP Sniper Rifle Scout. So I'd already mostly painted this and that's why I decided to finish it. But I do think that the Scout with AP Sniper Rifle is better option most of the time so the army's going to end up with both options we've got a zenit 7 and again these are all speed painted the 112 uh the uxia and the zenit 7 they're all speed painted they're all around that sort of 90 to two hour 90 minutes two hour kind of mark um so you see in the design philosophy of the army so far is and, and i guess it comes from playing warhammer for so long where you kind of speed through the simpler models and you save all the effort for the for the posh big centerpiece models uh which here's some you know here's an example of that uh i finally 
Finally bought Team Polaris. I've been meaning to buy Team Polaris for ages. I don't know why it took me so long to buy them. Probably just because I knew I wouldn't have time to paint them. But they go in so many of my lists. At 15 points, uh, they generate two orders for like three points. And I mean, th like if, if you split that down, this is probably not worth, the controller's probably not worth a point and a half. The controller is about as good as a rocker and, and not with as good a equipment. Um, but the bear is worth way more than a point and a half. So they're actually like two points and one points is how they're split in the book. But the bear's even worth more than two points. The thing's just insane. And I love playing it. So again, quick 90 minutes on the Polaris controller, but then on the bear pode, it took a lot more time. The bear pode got a full day all to himself. So a full working day, seven and a half hours. Um... And it shows, and I'm glad I did. The model's worth it. In fact, truth be told, I'm going to be going back to this and I'm going to be adding more of the white freehand because I love how the white freehand just picks up a bit more detail, makes things look a little bit more interesting. Probably going to add like something on this shoulder pad. Uh, if, if I've got done my camera work correctly, then that's the left shoulder pad I'm pointing to. Um, but yeah, I love the bear pod. I'm really glad I finally got to paint it. And, and this is a great example of that, that idea of, you know, the models that are less flashy, get them done quickly. The models that are more centerpiece and people are likely to notice them from afar and pick them up and have a look at them. Make sure those are the ones that have got the really flashy, sexy paint jobs on them. Because those are the ambassadors of your army, as it were. So if you want to, you know, demonstrate your painting to other people, then that's the way to do it. You zone in on the models that they're likely to pay attention to. And use those models to show your better work. It doesn't have to be your best work. They don't all have to be bangers. But, you know, if you are going to show off a bit, show off a bit on the models that people are likely to pick up. So that's where the Ariadne stands as of this very second. And it's not a bad place to be. Uh, what are we talking here? Three, five, six, nine, twelve, fourteen models currently. Um, and that's probably about enough to make most... 15 to 25 point lists that I'm likely to make probably doesn't quite get me to some of the 30 point lists that I would make uh, because like I'd be looking at things like Volkalax uh, which again I have but I chose not to paint in favour of like I've got a Vet Kazak, a Cosmo Soldat and a Blackjack so I've got a lot of HIs already painted here um, but I would probably be looking at Volkalax in those high point lists because you may as well take a bunch of heavy inventory in those lists um so this is where i'm at it's a good place to be at there's there's a lot of painted metal there uh it's definitely enough to play the games that i'm going to be playing at shycon um and that's going to range from you know pick up games of like three to five models aside all the way through to full scale 25 point or not likely but possibly 30 point battles so i did need to have that availability so as we come to the end of this you can see what I've painted from 012, you can see what I've painted from Ariadna, and I'm happy with that amount of effort, but it, it isn't quite there. We need a little bit more. 012 in particular are lacking on some tactical flexibility. So I've got to spend about a week on commissions now to make sure that I get out the stuff that I need to get out on time. But then I've got about four days before Shycon actually starts, and I need the 012 ready. So... What am I going to do? Well, here's the plan. I figured um, one cool way that we could add some tactical flexibility to O12 would be to chuck in some characters. Uh, you know, they all do quite unique things. One of the things that O12 tends to struggle with is they're not great in combat. So Liang Kai, pretty easy include. Um, great combat character, great close combat character. So adds that tactical flexibility. I also decided to get my uh, N4 rulebook Octavia painted up, uh, the, the missile launcher one. I actually really, really like this modeling code one. I, I understand that it's pretty underrated in N4, but a two-point missile launcher that shoots twice, in code one at least, is really, really good. Especially when, you have to remember, there's no guts rolls in Code 1. It's not like you can make her duck down. So it's also a good arrow piece as well. 
Besides that, I have got the Ariadna Scout primed up and ready to go. So Ariadna are going to have that as an option. Um, I just decided in the end, I'll see if I can get it done. It's not essential. There is no role that this fills that the Zenit doesn't really, at least in Code 1. So it doesn't matter if I don't get this one done. But it's also not a particularly time-consuming model to paint, so it's not the end of the world if I don't get it done. And then the final thing that I'm somehow, in this four-day period, planning to try and fit in, is this Zeta. Um, which, again, I've started it. It's got, like, the dark to mid-blue airbrush work done on it. But that's it. It's got the dark to mid-blue airbrush work done on it. This Zeta is... It's very unlikely I'm going to get this painted. But I feel like, you know, if I'm... If I'm playing a game with someone who's new to Code 1, like, getting to use a tag will feel really cool. So I'd really like to try and find time to do it. So that's my mission now, is to see if I can get this stuff ready in time for ShyCon. And like I say, when this video drops, it's going to be just before ShyCon, like a couple of days before. Uh, ShyCon is starting on the sort of Friday night, kind of. The social side is starting on the Friday night after this video goes live on the Wednesday. Um, so there'll be a couple of days, but you will get to find out. Uh, you'll get to find out if I succeeded in this challenge of painting a Zeta, an Octavia, a Liang Kai, and an Ariadna Scout in four days, um, which I think is actually harder than the mass volume of stuff that I did in a week, because these are all models that I'd want to show off on apart from the Scout. So it's it's going to be tricky, but we'll see. We'll see if we can get it done, and uh, and you will get to find out because there is going to be some sort of vloggy kind of coverage of Shycon. I haven't decided exactly how I'm doing that yet, but something is happening, and you'll get to come along for the ride. So I hope that'll be fun. Um, this video has probably been a bit longer than maybe any of us expected it to be, but I just wanted to do something that was kind of fun and laid back and involved me just showing you some miniatures I like. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do not forget to give the video a like if you did like it, to su consider subscribing to the channel, and um, you can look in the description below for affiliate links and my Patreon if you wish to support the channel and, and help me keep making these videos. So I hope this one was fun. If you're an enthusiastic Infinity player or wanting to get into Infinity or whatever, then you know maybe this was uh, just a really nice fun look at a bunch of models for you. But have a good one, folks. Happy hobbying. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now. So, yeah... <clears throat> Oh, I just I just managed to pull one of his arms off. That's uh that's the thing that happened. I, I mean, it would have come off in transit, I guess anyway, so <laughs> that'll be a good one for the outtakes reel.